Asia. It is a weapon of transformation and a passport to the future. It marks credibility and years of training thousands of professionals in HND. BTEC, BSc, an MBA in the schools of business and management sciences, engineering and education with remarkable mentorship from the University of Bamenda for the BTEC and MBE and the University of Boya for the BSc program is second to know. From committed professors and lecturers in classrooms to numerous academic field trips, internships and workshops. Hitmap will reform and guide you towards your success. Admissions are now open in our Boya and Douala campuses. Join us. Together, we will build a legacy. Himad is what it is today because of his excellent and competent teachers. You children, Himad, will be the perfect place to gain that professionalism that you need to further your educational career. The Higher Institute of Business Management and Technology, the University Institute for Professionals. Hello, televiewers. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Prime uh, on my media prime. We this day are going to be looking at uh, what is making news in Cameroon. Uh, we look at uh, the letter that was addressed to the United States Under Secretary for African Affairs, uh, Chibonagi, uh, calling for him to stop the deportation of Cameroonians uh, to Cameroon, given the stakes on ground now we equally are going to be revisiting the letter that was addressed to diasporans by Tibo Nagi himself the deputy secretary of state for african affairs for the united states of america Tibo Nagi, who called on uh, the cameroonian diasporans to shun uh, violence and uh, hate speech uh, so that uh, they can work for peace to return in the country we equally are going to be looking at uh, the situation of our traditional leaders we are going by what is happening to them. There are increasing attacks on them uh, daily by many quarters. Uh, we ask the question whether it is time for traditional rulers to quit uh, politics uh, for once. We are going to be discussing this with our panelists who were invited for the program. Uh, Dr. Dimancho Michael is in the house with us. He's going to be one of our panelists today. Good evening and welcome. It's a pleasure to be here once more, and good evening to all our televiewers. Uh, the one of the vice presidents of the PCRN uh, party, uh, Akwen, is in the house. Uh, she is in charge of um, the diaspora, especially uh, working with women. We are glad to have you. I want to send a special greetings to the newly elected Vice President of the United States, Mrs. Kamala Harris. Even though um, news are reaching out <laughs> that um, the, the results are, are being tampered with, like um, Donald Trump has won at the Alaska. So um, we are hoping, me as a lady, I hope that um, the Democrats stay on par because I want um, Kamala Harris to work with Joe Biden because women got power, women got the ability and leadership skills to bring um, the United States to where they have ever dreamt for. And they say, we make um, American great again. And I believe that with um, Madam Kamala Harris, American will be great again. I greet you, Madam, from uh, Douala, Fran TV. Thank you. Um, are you curious that Cameroonians have taken so much interest in American politics and uh, they are itchy? also making their voices heard, heard as to who should be the next American president. How does that even affect uh, Cameroon and Africa? Um, Mr. Kum, I will tell you that um, the American and the, polit the, the way the political atmosphere in the U.S. is going on is the same way it's, it's going on in Cameroon because mm. we saw how Donald Trump declared that Joe Biden is tampering with um, the results. So mm. Cameroon and Cameroonian sent they are, they are, they are, they are, they are bought of Elikam to, to <laughs> supervise the the, 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 the elections in the United States. Meaning, for me, it's, it's, it's bizarre, it's funny because Elikam cannot, um, cannot hold a perfect election in Cameroon because it is a corrupt party. So they went to the United States to corrupt or to, 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 
to contaminate the electoral system in the <laughs> United States. So to me, I think it's it's it works with the same way. That's why Cameroonians are agitated. They are they talk and they say Cameroonians are uh, the United States is copying from Cameroon. Okay, the United States is copying from Cameroon. Uh, Dr. Michael Dimachu, are you also surprised that Cameroonians have taken keen interest in as to who becomes the next uh, president of the United States of America? Well, I'm not surprised. You know, uh, we are living in a situation where uh, a very difficult situation in Cameroon whereby people are looking for the least distractions to get off the scene in, of Cameroon, in Cameroon. And it's like a state we get into states of escapism uh, because we are, are not comfortable in Cameroon through the different difficulties, the different uh, uh, the kind of life that we are leading in Cameroon. Uh, the least distraction out of Cameroon shields people's attention to that, and, and I'm not surprised. And, and, and of course, uh, people, it is a spectacular kind of election in, in the United States of America, and something too that marks my attention is the fact that in African countries, no incumbent president would, would cry foul that election has been rigged. But in the USA, it is an incumbent president that is crying foul that election has been leaked. So it is something that is a novelty in the world of politics. So of course, we are learning actually uh, uh, for the first time uh, as far as African politics is concerned. And I think that it could also be something that could be copied in, in Africa, that an incumbent president should think that election has been rigged. Uh, and and it, this, this, this is a high proof of maybe another way of democracy, you know, to show that actually the incumbent president is not in, totally in control of what is happening. Yeah, we've, yes, seen, yes. we've seen videos of uh, some persons who seemingly are tampering with um, the process uh, or these are persons that are expected to be neutral the same way political parties are calling on members of LACAM to be neutral exactly that and uh, where else would you see apart if not in the US or in Europe where I mean uh, as I was talking about uh, in Cameroon for example you will find members of a LACAM who are actually doing that for the incumbent president because if you are caught doing that for the opposition, I mean, you only have your own family to cry and like somebody said, they, they believe will be buried. And, and I think uh, it's a good lesson. It's a good lesson for all of us. Uh, Sometimes things like this should come for us to be able to learn about few, one or two lessons to be able to implement in our own democracy. And we are seeing actually America is teaching us a lesson that, uh, I mean, no matter how democratic a country is there is one time that we are also going to have some irregularities and, and I, as I usually say there is no universal democracy you, you, democracy is according to the country and universal democracy is according to the people and that is why the definition goes the power of the people by the people and for the people okay. and, and, and we look at it and as we are going to be also looking at the traditional uh, society in Cameroon and I think that is also an important thing to talk about how democracy is in our African traditional society okay well, we the arrival of uh, Far Evistayo. He may have been caught in traffic. Uh, we are going to start with our topic for today. Um, the honor of this, uh, let us see, is uh, Congress of the United States of uh, United States, uh, Washington, D.C. Um, the Honorable Tibo Nagy, Assistant Secretary of State, uh, Bureau of African Affairs, uh, U.S. Department of State, CDA, um, Assistant Secretary uh, Nagy. But the letter says that we urge you to oppose deportations in that country and advise uh, the Department of Homeland Security to immediately discontinue any such action. Um, you appreciate this move? Mr. Kum, I appreciate the move because we know that um, those who are in charge of the, the troubles in the Northwest and Southwest are living in the diaspora. Mm. They are living in this country. So, to me, the first letter written by Mr. Nagy, the assistant... Um, mm -hmm. You are going to come to that second, second, second topic? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. To me... No, okay. Yeah. Congress, Congress is asking him to, to stop, stop the deportation of Cameroonians back home. The Congress is stopping... The Congress of Washington is stopping him from accelerating the, 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 the ability to deport Cameroonians back. Mm -hmm. To me, I do not appreciate it because it's a plan act, because these guys do not want to come here. These guys do not want to come to Cameroon and fix what they cost. <laughs> they do not want to come to Cameroon and arrange the problems they cost. Because to me, it, 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 it's, it's, it's 
it's something that was not supposed to even be problems to them because when we see what they say they said they want a dialogue you cannot dialogue from where you are you need to come to Cameroon sit down with the government or sit down with those involved and talk about the problems that are causing the Northwest and Southwest crisis so I do not appreciate the letter sent by the Department of Washington no, to uh, Mr. The, the, Congress, the Congress. The Congress. Now, okay. Uh, you, she thinks that uh, you think that Cameroonians who in the United States should be deported to come and fix the problem? Yes, I think that Cameroonians in the in the diaspora should be deported. They should come back home. They should come and experience what we have been experiencing because they are there. They are making noise. They don't know what we are going through. They should come here, experience what we are going through. I think that they should even come back with their children here, send them to Bermuda, Northwest and Southwest, so that they should test the atmosphere there. So <laughs> I do not appreciate the letter. I do not appreciate the counter letter from the Washington Congress. Okay. Uh, it says the Department of State has been clear about the rising violence and instability in Cameroon. Just this past uh, Friday, November 6, the United States Embassy in Yaoundé condemned the continued escalation of attacks on civilians uh, for the civilians in the northwest and southwest regions in the country, declaring that uh, the attacks showed absolute disregard for the social fabric of communities to, to say that this is coming from the United States and it clearly detailly um, explains what is happening in Cameroon is it to say that there is a close eye by the Americans on every aspect that is happening back here of course uh, uh, you'll be shocked to know that there are many more people uh, not only in America or in Europe who are, are much more aware and informed about what is coming happening in Cameroon than w we do you know, the world now is uh, is a village. You know, information now uh, goes widespread, and, and unlike those the days of the UPC, you know, early days of independence in Cameroon, where uh, many people were murdered, many people were killed, many people were brutalized, and there were no images to show proof of. And, and I must tell you, you know, the, the, the war of the in the, in the Bamlike land, the Bamlike, and many people died in, in, in I mean, in the darkness, and nobody could send this information to the world. The, that that war will have stopped. I mean, and, and, and that also gives the more reason why you, you see that the war, uh, the, the uh, independence war, ended so fast uh, because nobody could be able to uh, send these images to the world for the world to see. But as more and more today these images go viral, you find that that spirit uh, uh, it ignites more and more spirit in people to be able to fight. And you see, people get much more informed, and people are very very sensitive to the issues of human rights. And you know, we have many organizations in the world today who are fighting for human rights and they want to take interest in some of these things uh, today and that is why when they get images of that that sort they want to hang on those images they want to incriminate the government for what they are doing i know they want to also to take the good name of what they are doing as uh, this, uh, 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 as organization to be able to, uh, to to say tomorrow to put in the annals of history that they condemn these things and 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 and, and the countries they listen to and the international community listen to them coming back to the issue of repatriation uh, mr Kum, i would like to say disagree with my co panelists you say that I mean to de deport people I mean people to, uh, have the right to travel and if people the, the, the deportation is because of the, the Anglophone issue I think that it is utterly wrong for, 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 for the American government to do that. It's just like somebody runs from the war zone in the Northwest and Southwest and comes down here to the littoral or to the center and then you want to send him back to the Northwest and Southwest to go and fix the war. You know many people are, are war criminals. Many people are running away because they are they, they, they have been cited they have been spotted by this uh, the separatists or even by 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 the the, 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 the government militia and they have to run for their life and when you run and you find that you have got in a secure environment where you can be able to set it down I mean you are you are rather repatriated I would have really love that those who are actually uh, making those outings and I mean uh, uh, worsening the issue through their their activisms you know encouraging the war in the north and south was run. No, I've not seen any of them. On any, I mean, any name of any of those uh, uh, in the list that was sent. I think that those are the people that they have to touch, not innocent people who are even trying to run away. And people have even sold all that they have. I remember in, in some in the northwest region where many people sold their property because they wanted.
wanted to run away from uh, from the from the war and when you sell all your approval and run away from the war and you have to bring come back to face the war yourself i think that is actually something that needs to be con condemned in the strongest terms yeah but they are raising the issue of uh, calling those involved to book that is uh, sanctioning those uh, that are involved in uh, the human rights abuses in the southwest and northwest regions on both sides uh, what is he holding uh, the United States to press for clear sanctions. It is true, it started already, uh, but uh, holding back uh, military assistance to the Cameroon government. But uh, practically speaking, what is the whole? Are they still studying uh, the level of human rights abuse in Cameroon? Mr. Com, to me, I will tell you that um, the United States is. The United States is still taking time to to spot out those who are really the pivot behind the Northwest and the Southwest crisis. Is, and the, is, is, there, is there something happening there that they are not aware of now? There is nothing that the United States is not aware of. They are aware of everything that is going on in the Northwest and the Southwest because the images are viral. They go viral immediately. So. Um, for my own analysis, I would say that they are basically still taking time and looking perhaps the best sanction to give to these people, the best way to punish them. For me, the best way to punish them is sending them back home. Sending them back home. Because as my co-panelist said, he didn't see the name of any of those uploading or bringing out hate speech or the, those that are basically the men behind the mask on the Northwest and the Southwest crisis. If their names could be involved, I would say they should be deported back home. They should come back home and face the reality of things home. They should come back home and experience the pain we go through. They should come back home and feel how our children are being killed and feel how our children are being deprived from going to school so to me that's the best punishment the united states would have given this those who are involved directly on the northwest and southwest crisis because maybe sending them in prison there to me prison there is like living a good life you are just under you are you're, you're, you're living a good life it is not punishment they should send them back home and let them come and arrange the problems they have caused. They should come and sit on a round table, discuss with the government or discuss with the parties who are involved. Bring out solutions. They should come to a compromise. They should come to bring out, they should come to a compromise and give out their rights because they will say they are right. They are, they, they are fighting for their rights. They are fighting for the truth. But at one point in life, we are supposed to give out our right. We are supposed to, to, to give out our right just to save life because life is more important. Life is more important than anything. Okay, life is more important. My focus here is uh, on the sanctions because um, should we continue receiving letters every day after letter because this is coming from... Uh, four members of the U.S. Congress, uh, Thibault Nak, the, uh, actually uh, wrote to the, the Cameroonian diaspora three, four days ago. Tomorrow we're going to have another. Should we just continue receiving letters upon letters while the situation g uh, gets uh, very bad out there in the southwest and northwest regions with kidnappings, with uh, killings on both sides? Yeah, and, and that is, uh, has always been my concern, Mr. Kum, where I, I said uh, each time people say we are deeply concerned, we are deeply touched, and all the times people write letters. And, but then uh, we should also think that, uh, know that we are dealing with a sovereign state. Cameroon is a sovereign state. Mm -hmm. And of course, for our international community to get up and take, I mean, just dish out sanctions on Cameroon, uh, some steps, uh, they say a modus operandi that has to be followed. So, I mean, it's not just something that you get up in the morning and you say, okay, this state, I've got in this uh, kind of uh, criminal records about you, we are going to sanction you, even with the UN, you know, uh, and I'm uh, talking about the UN too, which is supposed to be the body that is in charge of all these, I mean uh, America is only playing, but I mean uh, a, 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 as a consent nation actually it is incumbent on the UN to be able to do something and, and the, the UN already handled it a lot more than it can even ever handle and we are even getting uh, information that the UN is a little bit bankrupt in trying to, I mean, in getting uh, hold of all the, 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 the kind 
of uh, the wars and that are happening in the world. But 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 then I, I think the UN should be able, should be reminiscent of the UN uh, Rwanda uh, incident, and they, they should be able to act fast because I have an impression that they take they are too slow. They are working at a snail pace. To uh, I mean, and if this is the case, then I would think that like the League of Nations, uh, the, the 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 reason for which the UN was was created uh, is becoming defeated, and therefore it, it should it should be dissolved. Uh, just like the League of Nations was dissolved because it failed to prevent the Second World War. And if the UN is working forward to get something like we call the, the, the Third World War, then the, its aim and objective must have been defeated. But then uh, we, we, we keep on having people who are writing letters and calling on the nation. But let us also think that they are also diplomatic. We are dealing with diplomacy here, where these countries actually sometimes play to the gallery. They play to the gallery because what actually the right and actually the kind of diplomatic relations that they have with this nation does not reflect the letters that they write. You wouldn't imagine that these countries, even though they keep on writing, the U.S. is still supporting Cameroon militarily. Even, even when some international organizations have cried foul and, and have asked the U.S. government to stop sponsoring military intervention, military uh, uh, training in Cameroon because the bees, the, the, the bees the, 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 that the, the, the U.S. The train in Cameroon are the very bees that are sent to the North and South region to be able to butcher and brutalize our people. And people have been condemning that. But the U.S. doesn't, it doesn't give a, a listening ear to the, that, but they prefer to write letters. Well, it is diplomacy. We accept that. It's just that we talk about the Boko Haram. At the time when the Boko Haram was very, very, and it's an, in, the, in the point where we are talking about looking for a solution is the time that America sent over 300 soldiers uh, to the north. So we are looking at politics the way it is done. I mean, behind the back door. What we are doing here with the letters they write is plain to legalities. But we are asking the world to be much more uh, concerned. But and two, asking Cameroon not to think that another country will have more concern for Cameroon more than Cameroon itself. I think that leaders are, are, are voted to be able to take care of the citizen. If there are other people who have to call you to order, to tell you that your people are dying, then we should be able to put them to question, ask them ourselves how they became there. Yeah, but uh, you, you, you're talking about the U.S.-Cameroon uh, relationship. The U.S. is also concerned because Cameroon is also faced with um, security issues, especially up north with Boko Haram. It is, it is true that uh, some of their guys were withdrawn. Cameroon is also faced with uh, issues of refugees from, uh, the, from Nigeria and Central African uh, Republic. And you know that uh, a stable Cameroon is needed for a stable Central African uh, sub-region. That is very correct, and that is why we say we create problems in order to bring solutions to that. And mm. that's why we are decrying these international organizations and, and, I mean, our uh, friendly countries uh, that we have, like the UN and the rest. Mm. Uh, we, we cannot create problems to look for solutions. When we are talking about issue of refugees, it is because even these countries have created, uh, I mean, that kind of a situation where we have refugees. We can still stay without refugees if we solve these our problems amicably. Yes, like the, I mean, we do not refuse any help from anybody. But I'm looking at the situation where uh, so you, you, you have your fowl, you know, you strip the fowl of all the feathers and, and then you throw the fowl down and then you call the fowl, I mean, and to give you corn. I mean, you, and you are expecting the fowl to thank you for, 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 for giving it corn. So I, I think that that's not the situation we have to do. If we, should, you, we should learn to fatten our, 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 our fowls. We should learn to take care of our people, not to put them in a kind of a miserable condition. And you know, it's also a system of governance. Uh, because in this in autocratic and dictatorship, you put your people in a very, very miserable condition so that they should come begging. And this is also another way to tear attention because one of the ways to tear attention from the power uh, of the presidency is to create this kind of side crisis so that people concentrate more on their day-to-day -day living, on their security, rather than concentrating on, uh, on, put, on put, putting down some body from power. And, and therefore, I think that our uh, uh, friendly nation and neighbor co countries should be able to come together I'm able to put a stop to this. But Dr. Uh, this letter states in this, uh, based on the conditions in Cameroon and the U.S. government's recognition of its severity, we urge you to assist in halting this flight immediately in the State Department's role of carrying out U.S. foreign policy. It is critical that we stand by our articulated posture of ending persistent unrest in Cameroon. Do you see them, uh, do you see this posture where the U.S. is persistent on seeing into it that uh, the war ends in Cameroon? 
Yes, the United States really wants the world to end in Cameroon because it is a crime that has affected a lot of lives. It yeah. has taken a lot of lives and it is affecting human rights because people are dying, children are dying. Education is being refused. So I think the United States has it in mind that this crisis that has stayed for over four years now should come to an end. But that letter to me or that correspondence yeah. should not be put into consideration because I want those in charge of this war to come home. I stand for the fact that they should come home. That letter or that correspondence should be ignored. It should not be put into consideration mm -hmm. because these guys are there. They don't know what we are going through. They don't feel the pain we go through. They don't understand what we go through. But they are the men behind the mask who caused these problems. So to me, that correspondence that the Secretary of African Affairs mm. should stop the process of the deportation of Cameroonians, which will take place on November 10th, should, not, should not be effective. Mm should not be effective he should ignore that and continue with the process okay you want you want uh, them to come back home but uh, this letter actually gives a very um gloomy picture that the situation is dire back home and it will not be wise for these guys to come back home um one some persons uh, wrote to me when they saw this this topic they said but how are people living are people not living in the southwest and the northwest uh, region uh, they are not they are not dead but, but I, I think that uh, 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 having the choice of where to live mm -hmm. is a human right it's, it's, it's enshrined in the mm -hmm. universal rights or uh, un universal rights i mean you can't impeach somebody you can't disturb somebody to live wherever i want to live mm -hmm. uh, and i don't think that it should be a, it should call for any noise for people to think that okay people have run out of cameroon to live in the united states what about those in europe what about those in asia are they also going to be deported I, I think that people should uh, handle the real issue and leave all those side issues. I call them so. I, so is, is it not also the the rights of uh, the United States of America to guarantee that people should be legal in 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 in, 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 in yes in your country? Exactly. That is what I'm saying. If that if deporting people is because they do not have regular papers, fine. It is the right of the U.S. to do that. But I, I think that people are taking the debate into another level where they think that they are deporting them because they, they ran away from Cameroon and, and they ran away from the war and they are in the U.S. And they want, I mean, I think that the, the, the debate should be centered on the real causes of what is happening. It should not be like the uh, diplomacy to Carrefour. Uh, you know, it should be something that is concrete, I, I think. Uh, and, and that is why I was uh, coming back to what I was saying. Let the U.S. get concrete. You know, I want to give you an example. When the Nigerian Bush <laughs> poppy, uh, the rich scammer, the host people was, I mean, scammed uh, Americans of billions of, uh, 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 millions of dollars and, and ran to the United Arab Emirates. Anyway, what happened? America gave, uh, I mean, uh, an extradition uh, uh, note to, 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 to Dubai. And the next day, the guy was brought back to the United States of America to be tried. Why can that not be done with the activists in Cameroon? Second, look at the issue of Saddam Hussein. Because he was in the interest of America, they will have to go looking for him. Look at the issue of Ben Laden. Because of the issue of America, they went the next minute to look for him. They did not write letters. I'm concerned, as the Americans themselves would say, we are deeply concerned with the issue of letter writing. This is after to me. It's a, I mean, uh, anybody action. can. Uh, what action? Yeah. Concrete action should be done. This is this is plain to the gallery, as I've said. Anybody can write a letter. It is easy to write a letter and say this one has written a letter. Say this. I mean, I think that action. I need incarnated uh, action, and not, not uh, illusory illusions. I mean, like people keep on. Uh, let us be serious about these things. I, okay. I know, and I keep on saying that America is placed on politics. The world is on play, is placed on politics, and people are dying. I, I, I think that these people even rule run to the. United States, I supported them because they would be like the Israel, the remnants of Israel in the Bible. When they want to kill everybody, they will come back and at least <laughs> occupy the land. I think we should be objective. God, God forbid. Yes. <laughs> God forbid. You and I are in Duala. Nobody is killing us now. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I've been bumping in my house so many times. <laughs> okay, good evening, Mr. Liu. This is more writing from Yaoundé, the opinion of the UN Congress. Uh, 
that to suspend deportation is laudable. Good evening to you. Mo uh, writing from Yaoundé. This one says, halting the repatriation is an unfriendly action. A big percentage of Cameroonians abroad are responsible for this nightmare we are going through. Let them come and taste the heat. Nkwain Bless is also writing from uh, Yaoundé. Hi, Mr. Liu. I'm Nelson from Scotland. The lady don't understand Cameroon until she leaves Cameroon. Trust me. People left Cameroon because of frustration and you are praying for their deportation. <laughs> Esther writing from Yaoundé says, Good evening, Mr. Liu, and to the co-panelists. Uh, I want them to come and finish their fufu, especially the Ambazonian leaders, <laughs> Esther. Okay, good evening to you, Esther. Uh, Boni writing from Boya says, Good evening, Mr. Kum. I love your program. The lady on board has a soft voice, but I'm tempted to think she sent behind those in the diaspora. Okay, um... Dagen Donatien, also writing from Yaoundé, says, uh, Good evening, Mr. Liu. We don't need our colonial master anymore. We have the yam and the knife. This is the time for development. We are blessed in abundance. Good evening to you, Dagen Donatien. Stop calling, please. Uh, Liu and crew, good evening. That lady on the panel, okay, is, uh, <laughs> when we want to stop the war, we don't count the dead. She said life is important, but she want the people to come and die. Charles is writing from Tiko. Uh, I'm Ayabik Sardinasa from Kumba. If injustice surfaces to climax, then resistance becomes a duty. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Leo. I love your program. Cameroonians should begin to learn how to solve our problems. America is having enough in his hands. I'm Luis watching from Malabo. Okay, we look at our second topic, uh, which has to do, is still going to uh, be concerning uh, the United States and uh, Cameroon with this call from uh, the Under Secretary for African Affairs at Tibonash to, to Cameroonians who are living in the diaspora to shun violence. Uh, are we going to see this call? Did it too? Was it time for him to make this call? I mean, it, it is too late. This okay. call is coming too late. Because uh, I usually say that uh, no ambition of any politician, no ambition of whosoever is, uh, no blood of any innocent person was their ambition. Mm -hmm. Blood is precious. And, and I think that this court is coming at a time when we have already cried our debt. We have already lost so much. And, uh, you know, what keeps the world going is the memories of people who are dying every day. The more people die, the more people have the desire, that zeal, the zest to take up arms and fight again for their loved ones. And I think that most people at the beginning of this war or this crisis did not ever imagine that they can even stand and fight. They, most young boys did not ever imagine their lives that they could take up guns and fight. But let me tell you, you when you are actually pushed to the war, when you're, when you're pushed to the wall, sometimes you feel that, I mean, you, you don't have any reason to live again. And you think that the best way for you to do is to revenge. But then, I, I am saying that uh, no two wrongs can make a right. And these calls are coming w w rather late, but it is still, I mean, a time for us to save lives. Because we have not stopped killing. They haven't stopped killing. And I think that if this cause could actually be supported by the separatists, by the government, by all of us, because sometimes we all, all look at the separatists who are in the bush and the government that is in Yaoundé, and we think that they are the only people who are concerned about this. I think that this war should be heated by the politicians. Let the politicians come together and fight. It should be heated, uh, heated by, by the journalists. Let them come out with a concerted voice and be able to denounce this, because I know that the, the, the uh, journalists are like the tech, the, 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 the tech uh, power uh, in the nation. When they speak, the nation listens. And you, you not imagine what the impact that my media prime is making when it speaks about these things. I think that, uh, I mean, the civil society should come together and be able to talk about these things. The teachers 
should be able to come out. We have heard about many teachers who have died, and you see fine on that very day that the teacher dies and the teachers are in the classroom teaching. And you are teaching for who? You are teaching that your colleague who has gone. I mean, did what mistake did you do that he, he, he went so soon? And that the, the, the bullet, I mean, took him on a way. I think that we all have to have a concerted action in all these things, in every sphere of life. We display this cause as they have come. Let every other sector be able to also send its own far cry and far call to whoever is concerned. Be the separatists, be the government, and be whosoever that is sponsoring the war. We are not also forgetting the warmongers, those who are selling their arms to the people, because they are also, to, I mean, and, and we even, even to those countries that are actually, I mean, promoting the war by selling arms and all or not for their own selfish reason, I think that this call should be heeded by each and every one of us, and we should shame those who are doing that. We should be able to bring to their minds, they, 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 I mean, they, 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 the result, you know, I mean, the implication of what they are doing, because I think that blood, blood is precious, and it shouldn't be spewed the way it is being spewed in the Noah's and Sowers region. region. Why have we become animals? We have shouldn't become animals where someone just takes a gun and shoots. Where, I mean, people are just being butchered. And you see young boys standing on somebody with matches, and then they just butcher somebody without any remorse. I mean, have you become this, I mean, I mean beast, I mean, you know, son of bitches? I, 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 I mean, there are certain issues that, I mean, we need to go back to our own kind of morals, to our own kind of I mean, tradition whereby we we think that a human being should be sacred and therefore when this sacredness is desecrated everyone has to rise up and rise up up to, to the top of the mountain and say no enough is enough okay i'll say no enough is enough um uh, actually uh, he says he tells the diaspora that uh, the american government is no longer going to work with any group that promotes violence that preaches um hate speech is this going to change in any way the way the diasporans are going to be behaving do you think it's going to influence it yes mr Kuhn, because um the cameroon government and the cameroonians have been complaining that um the u.s or those that are harboring this the, the pivot behind all this have been silent mm -hmm. and they said at one point they were supporting them so the u.s government has felt that they have been accused for so long so they are supposed to tell these guys to take time, tell these guys to rearrange themselves, to stop all hate speech, to come back to a compromise, to give out their rights to me because this guy says they are right. They are fighting for the liberations of the Northwest and the Southwest. But at the end of the day, they are fighting for who? Because they are killing us. They are killing those they are fighting for. So the United States is not wrong and they are coming at the right time because the attack on the children in Kumba was the height of it. It happened in Gabu. Nobody said anything. They accused the... The military. The military, no, the military first of all accused the separatist fighters. Mm -hmm. After investigations, they found out that it was the government. So the government said these guys have been put to detention. We don't know, we are not sure. To me, the United States has done the best thing. They are doing the best thing and I applaud them. They should continue fighting for the rights of the children in Cameroon. They should keep fighting for the end of the Northwest and Southwest crisis. And this will affect the way these guys, because they'll be afraid. At one point, they'll be afraid that if they continue, the United States might arrest them or send them back here. So to me, I think that uh, uh, the, the United States has done something which is good, and I call upon these guys to listen to the voice of the United States and change their ways and come out for peace and come out for a compromise and come out for dialogues or, or media outings that will change or stop the anglophone crisis because we know that they are the ones behind this but i will tell you mr leo it is this note is not only to the diasporas because they are not only the diasporas who are involved there are some government officials living in the diaspora who are still the pivot behind all this so the government should not say they have won or they should not be happy thinking that they have won 
on the side of the UN, United States government working on their sites. Mm -hmm. I am telling them that this note is a, it's a tactical note that carries a lot of messages. Okay. It carries a lot of uh, message. It, what, what would be the what would be that implication? What would cost uh, the U.S. Under Secretary uh, for African Affairs uh, Tibonaki to come out with this call to the Cameroonian diaspora? Is it to say that he or oh, the United States has been observing what is going on? Are they so concerned now about what is happening back home? Uh, uh, in war situations, in war situations. Churches, schools, are sacred places in war situation. Meaning that you can hide in a church and you can hide in a school. And nobody has any right to intrude in these places to kill. When you look at the recent development in Cameroon mm -hmm. with the Kumba school issue. Mm. Kumba, you know, Kumba, Kumba killings, uh, Limbe. Limbe yeah. attacks, uh, kidnappings, exactly. kidnappings in that Fumbu is it. and Fundo. Usually, there's a school, at, schools are temples of learning. And once this temple is touched, mm -hmm. once this temple is desecrated, it is every household that is felt. Nobody remains as an exception. And that is why you realize that although there has been killing, the, that killing that happened in Kumba touched every family more than any other. And therefore, the, the world, when the world sees this happening, they know that this is coming to a real world situation. That people have to actually intrude in these places, which are sacred places, and kill children, innocent children, children who do not even know anything about what is going. And then you intrude in this place and kill. The world cannot stand in defense any longer. And I'm sure that I remember that even Tibo Nagi condemned this, and the world condemned me in the strongest terms. And this must have been what has caused the U.S., through Tibo Nagi, who is in charge of African affairs, to come out and call the African diaspora, who didn't even condemn this. This is what is intriguing about all this. Because all of these activists, very few of them came out to actually say that what happened in Kumba was the wrong thing, and that we have to be able to, 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 to respect and, 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 and preserve uh, the, the, these places and our children. Most of these people rather took it and politicized it. This one said it was this, this one said it was this. I think that there are certain situations where when something happened, we forget about our differences and condemn what has happened. This is what was supposed to happen in the issue of Kumba and Kulu and all the other places. That we should forget about the differences and condemn this to the strongest terms. But rather, we, rather, we realize that people rather went further into their differences. The differences either rather widened and then the U.S. is right looking. We thought that these were actually people who were, support, were out to solve the problem of Cameroon. These activists, we thought they were out to be able to assist Cameroon solve its political crisis. But rather, they have realized that they are rather jubilating when some things like this happen. And the U.S. had to hit their hand on the table and said, now we have understood that you are not actually out to be able to fight what is happening in Cameroon, you are out for personal gains. And now he calls them diasporas. He's not even calling them out and those who are fighting with him. He calls them diasporas. And this should send a warning to them. The fact that that name has been changed, that nomenclature of actually being uh, freedom fighters and whatsoever, uh, uh, at the IG and all those things, there is no more name of that nature. It means that rather than looking at them as freedom fighters, because that is what happened in a country in crisis like Cameroon, whereby although we, the, the, the government looked at them as terrorists, the international community looked at them as freedom fighters, as liberation movement. But now they are no more regarded as liberation movement. They are now regarded as simple people who are hiding somewhere in America and Europe and trying to instigate people back here in Cameroon. And they are all names, under the name, or they are codenamed diaspora. And therefore, those diaspora, without any distinction, without any name, whoever you are and wherever you are, you should know that we are condemning this and the next step is going to follow. Watch and see what is going to happen. Okay. Uh, good evening <clears throat> to all in the studio. The lady is saying that separatist leaders should be repatriated. It sounds okay. But what if they are killed? Think of what the government can do. Monzi is writing from Limbe. Um, Akwen. Yes. Now, what he says that is possibly because of what happened in, in Limbe and uh, in Kumba, especially, and Kumbu, 
Now, have they? Mm. Do you think that the American government may have waited also for so long, impatiently, to see uh, that things really get organized on the part of the Cameroonian diaspora, and that they have not seen that coming? Yes. And they are afraid that um, uh, uh, even worse things may happen in the days ahead. Yes, Mr. Kuhn, because the, the United States government has been watching. They have been patient. As my co-panelist said, at the beginning, they thought that these guys were fighting a just cause. But at the end of the day, they realized that these guys are the ones uploading the war in Cameroon. They are the ones who are in charge of the war in Cameroon. So they had to come out with a warning. To me, it's a warning to them. To change their ways it's a warning to them to come to a compromise it's a warning to them to give out everything they hold dear for the peace and serenity in Cameroon so I think that the United States government was patiently waiting it is not as if it is the Kumba crisis or what happened in Limbe that just made them they have been patient they have been looking at the diaspora how they are behaving what they have been doing they have been studying them closely with what happened recently in kumba and in limbe just gave them the the conclusion that these guys do not want peace to come back to the northwest and southwest because it is no longer a fight for autonomy it is a fight for personal gain it is a fight for it's a measurement of power on the both sides the government is fighting we are the ones in charge the the the, the diasporans and the separatist fighters are saying that they are the ones in charge of their zone so this note or this warning from the united states government has its place and I think that the diaspora living wherever they are in the United States, in every country they are, they should take this warning seriously. They should take this correspondence seriously. They should change their ways. They should come to a compromise. They should come to a round table. They should eat what I was la wison. Don't eat so concept la ba. And maintenant, il nous dit, we have decided that. We are giving up. We have decided that they should send what they want to the government. They should write down what they want to the government, that we have decided that we will come to a ceasefire. We have decided that schools should go back in the Norway and South because I do not believe that the government is the one who do not want children to go back to school. It is the separatist fighters who do not want children to go back to school. And the diasporas, they are the ones uploading this. Because if you watch videos, they say, any child that goes to school, cut off the leg or cut off the hand. So I believe that with the note or the correspondence from the United States, the diasporans, wherever they are, they should change their ways. They should come to a compromise. They should give up everything or whatever they hold dear for the peace in the Northwest and Southwest. It is very important. And I, and I continue saying that if they do not change their ways or change their manner of speaking, the United States government should fish them out, send them back here in Cameroon. They should give them back to the Cameroon government because we have suffered a lot. Our children have died. We see a nine-year-old child who died, a bambino who had committed no crime, Dying for the for the, the the greed of some political entities who do not want the peace to come back because they have their gain because it is no longer a problem of we are being we, we are being marginalized we want our language is being minimized or all that only le pouvoir a changé reasons okay. have changed okay uh, reasons some, have changed. somebody somebody is writing uh, from uh, somebody who is watching is writing that okay uh, the diaspora it is true that they are indexed but they see they there is need also for the government to grant uh, an amnesty to uh, the diaspora yes uh, yes i think we can uh, overemphasize that most of these guys are doing out of desperation uh, they are desperate and they, they already feel that they have lost everything and uh, you know they, they are like they are in the middle of the sea uh, to go back it is same distance to continue going and so the, the safer way is to keep going. So I think the government should open an, a door to them. Uh, it's unfortunate that our government is actually not also honest. Or honest. We have talked about the Swiss stocks. 
and they have reached a statement. We, we talked about the national dialogue. It reached a, a certain point where by we do not know what has become the outcome, I mean, a year after. So, I, 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 and two, with the, the leaders of the Angophones who are in jail, I think they should be good for somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Uh, why we decry the fact that the separatists are also going to extremes, we should also ask care for the indulgence of our government. If actually they have the will to solve this crisis, then let us see it. Let us not keep on doing the window dressing. Let us not keep, keep on deceiving us that they are solving the crisis. Meanwhile, they are helping to deepen. And therefore, I think that one of the things that they can be able to do is to organize a true dialogue, an inclusive dialogue, where they will be able to grant these guys some indulgence, grant these guys, I mean, uh, some, uh, some, 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 some freedom, I mean, let, give them the opportunity to be able to come back home and sit down and let us negotiate and let us talk on a round table, not what will happen in Yaoundé. Okay. Um, okay, so you think there is need for an amnesty to be granted? Exactly. Okay. An amnesty to be granted to them. Now, while uh, this letter is addressed to the Cameroonian diaspora, uh, do you think, like uh, two persons are writing, that uh, Tibonaki should also write to the Cameroonian government? Mr. Kum, I think that um, the, uh, the 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 Assistant Secretary of African Affairs should write to, to the Cameroon government because they play an important role in this issue. They are involved too. We will not sway all the blames on the terrorist fighters or the separatist fighters because in the beginning of this crisis, it was the, the, the lawyers who were on the streets crying. They were crying for something which was just, but the government on their own side insulted them, treated them like nothing. And today we are in a situation that has gone in many ways. So I think the Secretary of African Affairs should write to the Cameroon government telling them that they should, they should too, should bring out an atmosphere for these guys to come and express their minds because if these guys come back home what is the possibility that they will not be arrested what is the possibility that they will be hurt what is the possibility what gives them the grounds that they will work freely express their minds on the round table with the government so he should write to the government calling on their indulgence to be able to create an atmosphere conducive for both parties to sit down and talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is this call going to change the way the diasporans are going to be carrying themselves in the future? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, it is a system of governance. If at one moment I'm used to calling you my friend, and then another moment now, I say, instead of calling my friend, I say, hey, know that there is something happening. Okay. The diasporans, they used to be called by their names, by their real nomenclatures, by their activism names and whatsoever. But now, they have been called by a name that they were not expecting. It means that what? You know, language is funny. And you know, the language is understood the way it is spoken. And therefore, at this moment, they understand that they are no more friends to the people they thought they were friends and therefore they have to be very careful. And secondly, with the fact that some people are, are being deported, they should also think that there is something happening, that America can be able to, able to change sight, let them understand that they are deal it's a country that is dealing with another. America is dealing with Cameroon. And therefore, our brothers in the diaspora, they need to be very careful, be they the IG, be they what the restoration forces, be they whatsoever. We are asking them to be able to conduct themselves becomingly and be able to utterly synergize their effort and give, prove to the world that they are out to solve this problem and not to make their own gains. That they are not out to carry their suitcases and go to London and whatsoever to be able to negotiate deals uh, of oils and whatsoever. But that they are out, utterly, truly speaking, and in their own consciences to be able to help stop this crisis, to find a lasting solution to this crisis. And I think that they can actually help the government of Cameroon, which of course I think that is stubborn up to now. They can help the government of Cameroon to be able to solve this crisis. If they are able to come uh, and with concerted action, would they are able to come. The point is that they are cross purposes, they themselves. 
No one understand where another person is going. The moment this one sees that this one is having credibility, he find looks for a way in order to de destabilize or uh, discredit that, that 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 person. And I think that this is what has happened. That the American government has already put an eye on them, and has been studying them, and has realized at the end of it all that they are not the people that they thought that were going to bring a panacea or a solution to this problem in Cameroon. And that is why they are giving them the general name, the diaspora, and they are asking them. Be very careful. I think that this just is very particular warning. It's going to make a difference in the, in the, in the world beyond, in those our brothers and sisters who are abroad and who think that, who lo that they love Cameroon and they, they think that they have concern for this thing more than us who are here. Many, many of us have gone through untold sufferings here while we are here. They are there with their children. They are there with their families. But some of us, we, 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 we are going through untold suffering here. And I think this statement should sound a warning to them. If they were actually working in a very, very in a way, that, thinking that they were trying to make ways to ever to have their gains and sign their deal, from now henceforth, let them know that they are getting into a very, very serious issue and they are dealing with human lives. Hello, uh, Asa Nelson, writing from Douala Village. Mr. Leo, God should bless you many times for this educative program. In fact, your program has made me to learn and know so many things about this our kangaroo country. Extend my regards to my brother in Ground Zero, Asa Michael, publicly known as Pa Quini. Okay. Good evening, sir. Uh, is the program live? Yes, the program is live. You can contribute. I will read it out. That is why I am telling you that it's live. Uh, <clears throat> good evening, Mr. Liu. Okay. Uh, greetings to you all in the panel. Kadnatumi organized all Anglophone conference, but the government refused. It was for us to come together. Chin Chili Abigail, still writing from Douala. We are going to take a short break. When we come back, we look at the third topic for tonight. Prime are on my media prime this time around we are going to be looking at the situation of our traditional uh, rulers who have been going through hell for some days now not only for some days because uh, they have been killed severally we can remember vividly uh, his royal majesty Iso Ito uh, who was killed in a Kondo city and a host of other chief Mbanda who was killed in uh, Faku division uh, but it just continued because recently another chief was killed in uh, Boya and the phone of Kumbu was taken hostage and uh, released uh, yesterday. We are asking the question whether it is time for the phones and chiefs to steer clear of uh, politics we've been joined by um, Fa Tayong Elvis, who is a militant of CRM uh, political party. Good evening. We're glad to have you. Thanks very much. Coming very late at the time when I discovered that the Cameroon is not set for any organization of Shan and Khan at the same time. Because if you look at the traffic hurdles you get on the way, it tells you that Cameroon is only singing a song. All the parameters that are supposed to be put in place for the organization of the football competition, traffic itself will be the number one hindrance to that. Well, I think greetings to the people of Gonoko Village, the people of Barakwe, the people of Mbemi Village, and uh, all the millions of viewers who are watching us right away. It's my pleasure being here today. Yes, um, we are first take on the situation of our traditional rulers. Do you think they are clearly targeted by some people for unknown reasons? Oh, yes. I think that um, I'd made to serve a series of Vox Pop for some time concerning traditional rulers. I spoke to most of them cutting across the northwest and the southwest region, and uh, most of them told me that uh, it is their fundamental right to belong to uh, to belong into any party, any political party. Uh, but I realized that the uh, when the most of them spoke to me, some of them are watching me right away. Uh, what was very peculiar was the fact that they were trying to justify their party lineages because I first of all understood where some of them belonged while I was carrying an interview. So I realized that 
if you ask me whether are they supposed to, I think they're supposed to stay clear of politics. They're supposed to stay off politics completely. Uh, for the simple reason that traditional rulers are the, supposed to be custodians of tradition, and they're supposed to be father of all the people, that's the, the subjects they, they governed. Meaning whether you belong to which political party, they are supposed to take all of you as their children. But you see, the vulnerability of most of these traditional rulers is what has caused them where we are today. And the government itself, being the kangaroo government of the first order, limping on one leg and at the same time moving towards the end, has always been at the forefront of putting in place strategies that would trap most of these gullible traditional rulers, for some of them are gullible, and put them in their pockets so that they can now dance to the whims and caprices of the government. And you see, from the first thing when they said they instituted the salary, uh, I call it stipends, because I said, if you are a first-class ruler, for example, to collect 150, when you have about six wives, you have about 20 children, how do you cope? You know, it's more of an insult. Yeah, what has that got to do with politics? We are talking about paying them as uh, auxiliaries of the administration. It has got to do with politics. It has got to do. Mm -hmm. The government decided to put them in this aspect of this compensation rule so as to make them identify themselves with the government so as to easily dance to the dance that the government wants them to dance. And that's the more reason why you realize that elites themselves, our own elites, are the ones who have been, who were sent from Yaoundé to champion the cause of pocketing the various traditional rulers. And if you realize, I come from Bengui, for example, in Bengui Central, you realize that we had the saga whereby a minister invited some of the traditional rulers and they died on their way to Yaoundé. About three of them died on their way to Yaoundé. And you start asking the question, a female minister who is supposed to come to the palace as traditional demands, as a woman, to meet traditional rulers is the one who is the cause them to come to Yaoundé on a phone call. Why? Because these, most of these funds have been made vulnerable. They need not go in there, they'll be able to catch up one or two hundreds of thousands of funds CFA. So you can see that the elites themselves are the ones who have passed through the government mechanism to pocket these, these our funds and chiefs and to make them vulnerable to anything they want them to do. That explains why in sometimes when we monitor elections in mental division, we had a period of time at the, at the particular municipal election whereby most of the government who were caged uh, at a particular hotel in Wum, you had a traditional um, uh, ornaments that was placed on the ground and they were asked to jump over. That's our aspect of swearing, taking an oath. I'm sure you know about that story in whom? I'm talking about whom Central. And so if you look at it critically, many of them had taken the advantage of being traditional rulers to use their powers and the tradition bestowed on them to instead play on the politics for the state against the people. And for those of them who were not able to play that dance, most of the elites will tell you, okay, the government cannot come to your area because you are not playing the dance of the state. And that's why you had this common adage that you scratch my back, I scratch my back from the Santa Mafia uh, connotation. Which means that most of the chiefs uh, of France knew that you had to do something for the state if you expect the state to do something for your community. Which is not supposed to be so because the state is supposed to carry out development equitably in the areas around the national territory without necessarily getting funds to be on their side. Okay. Now, uh, is that... Any is there any justification for increased attacks on these chiefs? We see them being targeted in FACO, in Dian, in Manu, and in the Northwest region. I think shooting, uh, targeting a, a chief or a phone, or uh, shooting on a chief on a phone is like shooting yourself on a foot. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I want to come back to the issue of the traditional tr uh, rulers. And, mm -hmm. You know, uh, 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 in the early days, in the early days, uh, the, the funds were really a rallying force in our villages. They were a rallying force. Because uh, during those days, we had our farms, and the farm depended on the farms, and they had so many wives and so many children, and of course, they depended solely on the, the farm products and whatever to, I mean. Now, we more, the more and more we have embraced what we call capitalism, things have changed, you know. We have shifted from that communal life to capitalist life in such a way that the funds that has so many wives and children has to take care of those children. And now, people have recently, with this capital system, have drifted away from the palaces. Meaning that what? It was very common during the early days for people to go to the palaces and give the phone. The phone never lacks. We used to know that if you are hungry, you go to the palace and eat. There was abundant food. You cannot go to the palace and come back empty handed. That is one of the things that we used to know. That even when you were running and you were desperate and they were pursuing you, even you were a thief, you get into the palace, you know that you have reached a paradise. So, but things have changed so much that even some of us, we do not all longer even give our funds, even, I mean, the little thing that they are supposed to depend on. We expect the funds to fend for themselves with the, so many wives that they have, so many children that they have. And now, 
The phones, they have to sponsor their children. The phones too will not like to receive that kind of disgrace where their children do not go to school. And now what has happened now? The politicians now have taken an advantage of that. They now go to the phones. Since they know that the phones too used to be a rallying force of the people in the villages, they now tell you, if you do not adhere to what I'm saying and take on the party line, I am not going to support you. So our phones were pushed to the wall. And what will happen is that they started putting on posters of parties in their on chambers in their arenas and whatsoever. So problems started. And now people who had very different views from political different views of what the phones had, now they started creating conflicts with the policies. And now the issue has grown now. The Angofun issue has just come to finish that trigger. I mean, to explode it and let it go viral. That people are now taking an advantage of the fact that at this particular time, this phone was doing this, this phone was doing this, and now this is my advantage to take revenge, and that is what is happening today. But I like to think that it is shameless, it is very, very shameless for people to do that. In as much as it is bad for our phones to keep on chasing fines, to keep on chasing and going out of politics, and thinking that the best way they can be able to live uh, their lives is to follow politics, I think that uh, it is wrong for us, for the separatists or whoever, to think that the best way to do to a phone is to kill, or to achieve is to kill. Now, the advice to the phones is, I think that if you are a good phone, you are a good phone. We have had phones who have run away from their policies in the North and South West region. And we have had phones who have stayed in their policies up to date, and they have not gone anywhere. And they are in their policies. Nothing has happened to them. And it is because these phones lead for the people, and they have tried to show an exemplary life. Why do will you come and attack a phone who has tried to live like Solomon, to live a wise, uh, like a wise phone with all these people and trying to give, bring justice to the people? You will not come to kill that kind of a phone. So any phone that is running away from his palace has uh, some skeleton in his cupboard. And therefore we are asking that even though this is happening, we do not have the right when you see, to, uh, have to, skeletons, to When you see have skeletons in the cupboard, uh, what is the crime to belong to a political party as a phone? A phone is supposed to have a party only in his mind. And the exercise of that party is only to be on a voting day. And nobody is supposed to know what is voting Is that what the constitution says? That's not what the constitution is because the government has tried to be able to toy them around like toys and be able to make them to the lines that Where is it written? Be. Where is it written that phones should not belong to political party? I think that the phones should not belong to a political party because the phones rule people who have different views of politics. And therefore, knowing that if they belong to a particular party, they are going to create some kind of conflict with their, with their own subject. And I think that is not even what the, uh, the, the traditional institution stands for. A traditional institution should also have its own constitution, it should also have its own modus operandi. And I think, uh, I mean, when a phone stands openly and is preaching politics in open, with an opponent, who is the subject? Will the soldier not be able to stand up and talk in his face and say, this man is, uh, what that man is saying is wrong? And of course, you know, in a traditional society, you are not supposed to talk in, on the, in the face of the phone. You are not supposed to say a phone is wrong. But when the phone starts talking politics, it starts being wrong. And this is wrong traditionally. Okay, it's wrong traditionally. Uh, do you think, um, Aquen, that politics has helped to divide, um, to take the forms and the chiefs away from the people, especially if they openly identify with a political party, uh, do we find more and more camps within villages uh, in the in Cameroon, not not, not only in the southwest and northwest region, because uh, some chiefs, uh, some funds identify openly with a political party? Mr. Com, to be candid with you, um, the system of Cameroon always has a way of making you, keeping you under control. Okay. The Cameroon government has made it in such a way that these chiefs are on their back and course. Normally, a chief or a phone is supposed to be a neutral body to me. A chief or a phone is supposed to be the parent of his children because people from his village are his children. But today, we will notice that the majority of chiefs are from the regime. It is not because they want to. It is because the regime always has a way of keeping you under control. Because when elections come closer, these chiefs have the capacity of convincing, convincing their subjects to vote for the regime. And they will come to, with some kind of propo propositions to them, telling them that if you are able to, 
if I'm able to win in your village or in your in your town, you will have this opportunity. I can tell you, Mr. Kumyona, with the regional elections that is coming in December, on the seat of December, mm. many chiefs are fighting. Many chiefs are going in, not because they want to, but because they want to live well too. In those days, our, our, our chiefs were being fed by the population. Our chiefs were being given food by the elites of the village. But today, we no longer have value for our chiefs. We no longer have value for our sacred institutions. This pushes the chiefs or the funds to concur to the propositions given to them by the regime. Because if they, are not gi if they do not accept, they will not eat. In this case, uh, who do you blame? Is it you, do you, are you saying that the population has abandoned their chiefs to fend for themselves and they are left uh, with no choice? Than to, yes. Yeah. I will congratulate the Bamleke community because they still keep their secret. They are still in that ability of going back home every December, feeding their chiefs, caring for them. But others have abandoned that tradition. That is why you will see that most of our chiefs in the Northwest and Southwest are with the regime because they are hungry. They need to feed. They need to send their children to school. Who will help them? The, the elites of the village have abandoned them. So they are now at the beck and call of the regime who comes with a proposition that if you are able to convince your population to join me, you will have these advantages. Now the chiefs have been paid. With these regional elections, we, we are trying to do a door-to-door -door campaign. When you go to a chief, he will tell you, je suis avec le régime. So they are the ones paying them. They have no choice than to be with these people. And at the end of the day, the Anglophones will always target them because of their political positions. They will always go to them and, you know, point fingers at them that they are with the regime. Meanwhile, okay. normally it was not supposed to be the case. Okay, hello, Mr. Leo. If funds belong to a particular party, they can't rule well because they will never see anything good from his subjects from another party. Zantu is writing from Dubai, training to you, Zantu. Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu and those in the panel. The U.S. government should send them back. After all, they have no good intentions. This explains why they have no value for our lives and that we don't give them our mandate. He says, and those on the panel chiefs should not uh, be targeted because it's not their fault. And if we understand our system very well, then we will be able to know. Mola Fako is writing from Limbeck. Good evening to you, Mola. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. Traditional authorities are also citizens like us who have a right to belong to a party and even sensitize the people as well on the right path to follow. Prophet Gift is writing from Yaoundé. Good evening, Liu and panelists. Let our traditional leaders be the traditional rulers they are known for and not government representatives. Kazo is writing from Loom. Good evening to you. People in the studio, the program is interesting. I think that the peace in the Northwest and Southwest is in the hands of the government. We should stop blaming people in the diaspora. The question is what happened before peace disappeared. The crisis didn't start in the diaspora, but it was due to the unwillingness of the government to do what is right, that we are where we are today. Cornelius is writing from Mamfi. Now we are talking about, I asked uh, him whether there was a constitution in Cameroon that uh, forbids traditional rulers from meddling into politics. He says no, and um, the, the chief is living or oh, is working with uh, <coughs> the traditional council. He has other institutions like the Quifon and other, other secret societies. Why is it that for the past decades, uh, because this, uh, this split between traditional rulers and their subjects actually started in the early 90s when some chiefs identified with this and then those who belonged to other parties saw them as uh, black legs and, and the like. Why is it that this has been going on and the tr members of the traditional councils are unable to call the chief to order or the funds to order? Uh, these uh, secret societies are unable to tell the chief that the path you are taking is destructive for our respective communities. The main issue in the whole show is that most of the funds or the chiefs 
who embraced the regime-oriented method of administration, went as far as corrupting their various traditional institutions. Many of them have been able to get some members of the Quifon, members of the traditional council, have been able to lure them to their side. So that in their absence, even it is these members who even go around campaigning and doing things on their behalf. At the end of the day, when they get booty from Yaoundé, they come back, they always make sure that they call the members of the, some, not all because it is not all members of the traditional council who uh, take to those things. So for the members who succumb to it and to the whims and caprices of the phone, that when the phone comes from those their journeys or those manuals come in, they easily call those whom they know are loyal to them and easily cheat them something. For those, they know like in my village, we have some members of the traditional council who will never and ever tell you that they are into partisan politics. So these kind of people, if you look at it, if you're in a particular village, you'll always be having problems with your phone. Who is pro-regime? And you are the other way around. And sometimes even you realize that if you have even a problem in the village concerning land or all the like, the phone will always want to rule against you because he sees you as someone who does not want to work for him to eat, to have what he has to eat from the regime. So the main issue is that the institutions will not able because when politics sets in, this thing is a carefully calculated attempt. From the time of the 1977 constitution, talking about restructuring of the traditional authorities and all the like, calling them as auxiliary to the administration, right up to the present, from the time of uh, President Amadou Ahijo, it was a careful system to weaken the traditional authorities, so that it comes to a point whereby they become, as the constitution state, auxiliaries to the state. You could imagine a small gendarme officer who will remand a, a traditional ruler in, in custody, or tell you go behind the bars. These are things that could not occur when we had the House of Chiefs. In those days of West Cameroon, it could not happen. But today you see it's something different. That you could be given a convocation, you come, and a small police inspector, or less than a police inspector, or probably a, what you call a, a guardian de la paix, will, will remain in custody, and it was. So if you look at it critically, the problem is that the state realizes that, had realized that some particular fundums and chiefs were very powerful. And if you don't put in place a long-term mechanism to weaken them, and pass through them to weaken the system, the ones at the point in time make the decision difficult to go through the activities. That explains why, as we talk about this issue, it's not all the traditional rulers who have embraced the politics. If you look like the phone of Baba One has never been into party politics till today. And so, when I talk with him from time, he tells me he does not want to be caged. And that is true. So, what happens? Obviously, they will tell you that the things that benefit are supposed to come to, the other, uh, to somebody who adheres to the administration will not come. But the main issue here is that why the state puts in place careful mechanisms to weaken these traditional institutions right down to the people or whatever the case might be, most of the funds themselves, those if you have of present day, also contributed. I understand we're talking about the time that uh, subjects used to feed their funds and all the like, but I think that times have changed. And the modern funds for today, they now know that you have to work for a living. Now, I spoke to some of my funds in the Mbengi Central area, and I asked them, if you keep on, Play the politics for the Yaoundé regime, as one of our ministers and the rest of the elites are luring you and taking you to the regime with little or no benefit. Why can you not tell them to get you a befitting job if they mean business for you? Because all I got was that they had to striving to live. So you discover that the regime itself will not also want to place you very well. They can give you titles, a charge de mission, a member of the central committee, but to put you where you're supposed to, they will not want to put because when you become also well placed, you might become a little bit stubborn at the point in time. So all in all, it's the same system the, the regime uses as far as current, in terms of economics. Mm -hmm. They let people to be poor. They don't want youth to get befitting jobs. They don't want you and I to be because the moment you start being on your own, you have the possibility of resisting the regime. But when you become vulnerable, when elections come, they can pick one or two youths, give them 10,000, 5,000 fans to rig elections, and they'll be champion for that cause. So for the traditional institutions, it is something that I said that if you want to bring back the power of the chiefs and everything first, to make them be the way they are supposed to be, even though many have already embraced the system of the regime, it means you have to go back through the constitution. You cannot say that chiefs and first auxiliaries, no. They are supposed to be part of the administration, working head, head on. When you put an auxiliary, the geos have no choice than to lord over them. So a geo can, uh, because of this, the geos, they have what it takes to come out new layouts. So if you are you stop one, they, you will not benefit from new layouts, where you can make some money. But if you are loyal to the regime, they can now carve an area and say this is a new layer so that you eat from it and you become a member of the land consultative board and some okay. of the benefits are good. Okay. okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Moderator. I don't think a traditional ruler should be involved in uh, politics. I concur with the lady in your panel who cited the case of the regional elections in FACO, a traditional ruler in FACO whose name 
is in the divisional list of FACO is uh, Mr. He has changed his title from chief to Mr. Now. He will, how will his subjects call him? Mr. O Chief Mola Mwambo is writing from uh, Boya. Uh, good evening to you, Mola. This is Yvette Star from Kribi. Just wish to say that peace in this country can only return only where the truth has been revealed and it's only the government who knows the truth about what is going on in this nation. Let them follow the everything will be okay. Okay, um, let them follow the Lord and everything will be okay. I think so. Good evening, panelists. Uh, the program is good and is going on well and very educative. I am for the fact that funds and chiefs should remain apolitical. They should be neutral so as to avoid taking sides with some subjects. If they engage themselves in open politics, it may lead to conflict uh, with them and their subjects. Ahmad Fred, writing from Kumba. Good evening to you, Ahmad. Um, good evening, Mr. Liu. The chiefs are still being fed by the people because before you build a house in your environment, you pay some money today. Palace Jude is writing from Bamenda. Good evening, Mr. Liu. I love your program. I really good and educated. God bless you. I am Mamuda writing from Jakiri. Good evening to you, Mamuda. Uh, good evening, sir. Mr. Andy from Boya, please don't blame them. Our traditional rulers, because in this country you must speak in favor of the government in order to stay alive. And a good evening. Good evening, Mr. Lua. I enjoy your program. There was a time which my phone, phone of Bali, Nyunga, removed Voma in the night that any Balian who will support CPDM will attack, will be attacked by Voma, which very Gangzia, writing from Yaoundé. Now, I ask the question whether why the traditional council is not also helping the chief to see that uh, involving in politics is getting the chief into problems. But we have uh, those we call political elites. If many persons are writing that they should not get themselves involved in politics, uh, we saying that they have been abandoned by the political elites, elites who know <coughs> the, the possible consequence of engaging in politics. On the contrary, the elites are rather implicating the traditional rulers. Okay. And that is my take on it. Mm -hmm. Because if I take from what happens, uh, maybe my site of area or the division where I come from, you realize that the elites who come from behind and lure these chiefs into these kind of situations. You know, the elites come and tell the chiefs, since they want to preserve their, their whatsoever in their own age, their positions on one area, and they think that they can pass through the chiefs to be able to corrupt the villagers. Now, they come to the chiefs and tell the chiefs, well, if you think you can assist me in this, i give you this. And the chiefs, they are there. So I, I, there was a scandalous thing that happened with these regional elections when the list came out. And when I looked at the list, I saw uh, the list from uh, Bui Division. The, the, the name of the phone of So was given properly his name. The name of the phone of Noni was given properly his I come from Noni. And there was an, uh, this issue of people actually. This is, these are things that you could never have heard of before. You don't call the phone by the name. At first, you address the phone, the phone of So. You don't say, send below. It is wrong. Yeah. Traditionally, it is wrong. I'm telling you, this issue is causing a lot of problems. You don't just write the name of the phone as if you are writing the name of your friend or your colleague. We didn't know in our tradition, we do not know that. I grew without knowing the real name of my phone. That someone will just address this, the name of the phone. You don't do that. I know the issue of classification too has come. And the phones are also fighting within them. I want to be first class. I want to be second class. Because the first class has this money. When they have their unions, they have this phone riding in this car and coming. So all of these things have caused what we are, is happening today. And yes, it is our system. Now the first two want to belong to the first class, to the bourgeoisie, and this fund wants to be considered as a paramount fund until some funds are even fighting and trying to put other funds under them and say they are paramount funds. These are not things that they are, I mean, these are secondary things that we are supposed to be looking at. To me, a phone is a phone. Whether you rule 50 people, you are a phone. You are a phone of your people. And therefore, this, the politics has come and mixed them up and you find that the funds now, they do no more reason again, according to the traditional uh, leanings, they now reason on how much they are going to get from the elite. 
And what just as uh, Mr. Fan said, you find that they corrupt their own subject, the, the traditional council. Because the traditional council too, they are also members like you and, and me. They too need to leave. They need to send their children to school. They need to eat. And therefore, when the funds receive that, in order to keep them, make them keep quiet, and to keep the queen from quiet, the queen should never sing again. The Miron should keep sleeping. They also pass some few uh, the envelopes to them. And now you find that tradition is not what we call tradition again. Because what happens to the chiefs today? I'm telling you, in the early days, before the 19th system was over, you would never hear that somebody has, uh, I mean, has uh, kidnapped a, a, a chief. I mean, they were just traditional secret society that were still alive. But we have desecrated them with money. We have desecrated them with things that come from, I mean, from the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the politics and whatsoever. And now those, our traditional values, those are secret societies, they too have disappeared and gone naturally. And therefore they come out again. Now a phone can go missing for the next 100 years and no traditional index will indicate where the phone is hiding. But in the early days, they could indicate, they could know that this phone, they go, we used to say, they go to the bush and they will find out to know where the phone is. And mysteriously, the phone will come back. So today, things have changed. And that is why we need to have a rethink. We need to go back to the drawing. We need to go back to our values and actually ask ourselves where we are coming from. Let's reassert our identity. If not, many more worse things will happen to us. So the fund, the elites are not concerned about what um, the funds go through. Hello, uh, is for, for himself and I mean, you know, everybody is fighting for himself. <laughs> Hello, so when you are a chief, you don't work. We need our children to go to school. Top is writing from York. Good evening to you, Top. Ngupol Ngong writing from Kumba says, Hello, Mr. Liu. I'm Ngupol Ngong from Akale Street, Kumba. I'm happy to see my senior brother, Mr. Michael, on board. The best thing for our funds to do is uh, to completely leave uh, politics. Good evening to you, my brother. Uh, good evening, dear friends. I really wish uh, that all those so-called diaspora should be deported back to Cameroon. Let's see if they can talk uh, the way they do. They don't even have any control over these hungry boys. Our elites and politicians are what we call comprador elites. Kingsley is writing from Douala. He says, imagine a chief after waiting for long hours only to be received five to receive five sabon and two buckets when he wants to talk the Jew said he will be removed to the chief those chiefs are of the government and CPDM <laughs> uh, good evening Mr. Liu I'm Adeline from Mutengene and I love uh, the program tonight and again I think we need more women on the show on regular basis thanks uh, if you are a woman watching this show and you think that you can participate in the show, even if you are a man, you think that you have what it takes to analyze and educate people, call me and tell me. I will, call, I will give you the opportunity. We need many more persons uh, to be part of this panel. So if you are watching and you think that you can do even better analysis, let us know. Mr. Leo, good evening to you and my man, Far Ernest, the chief. As very quiet uh, to the chief, as very quiet to their traditional things, but the government is too bad to involve everybody to their selfish politics. Okay, Fred Fang is writing from Mutengene. I don't get what you want to say. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Is Siklas She from Yaoundé? The government have corrupt our chiefs in such a way that they are all confused. They are not more there for the interests. Of the subject but rather for their selfish interests it's terrible you see this country needs uh, prayers uh, princess uh, G writing from uh, Yaoundé says good evening mr. Liu I support the idea of sending back all those promoting these killings in our country to come and test the bitter pills we have been taking okay good evening to you princess uh, G this one says, Good evening, Mr. Liu. When a woman uh, see that chairs are poor, what about the phone of Bafut um, in Yaoundé? Uh, Dennis, okay. Evening, Mr. Liu. Just a question for the panelists. I wish to find out if a phone can aspire to become the President of the Republic because he must represent a political party. Please, phones have the right to choose parties openly. God will is writing from uh, Yaoundé. Lots of messages from Yaoundé this evening. 
Good evening, Mr. Liu and Pandis. Please, the government should stop frustrating the traditional rulers. What these chiefs are going through is caused by the government. We love our chiefs. I love your program. Charles is also writing from uh, Yaoundé. Now, these chiefs are considered an auxiliary of the administration. And um, since it is very difficult to distinguish uh, a government from the CPDM, is that where the problem is? How do you be the auxiliary of the government and then stay neutral? Because here yeah, they are playing the role of a, a go between be, between their people and the administration. Mr. Kum, to me, the traditional chiefs can can be a bridge between the government and the people without being Into a politics. part of a political party. Okay. How? In which sense? You can transmit messages from your people. You can transmit the problems of your people to the government mm -hmm. without you taking sides, without you concurring to any political party. You can be very neutral to the extent that when your people are crying because you are their representative, you are the parent of these people, you are the father of your community. So you are supposed to hear their plight and bring to the government and not siding with the government or being part of the regime because this purely handicaps your, your, your position. It handicaps your, how can I call it? It will handicap your ability to, to better rule your, 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 your village or your community. They can be auxiliaries without being part of the regime or part of a political party. They can be neutral bodies. It is very possible. The only problem with the Cameroonian government is you, with the Cameroonian regime, because they always have a way of bringing you under control, you cannot be in Cameroon being an auxiliary without being part of the regime because you will go hungry. You will be, there will be so many advantages you will not have, which normally it's not supposed to be. The, the, it, it's not supposed to be like that. To me, I will blame to the, the, the elites of a community because in those days, our chiefs w were not working. We were the ones who feed them, care for them. But today, with the 21st century, everything has changed. So I think that there is also the part of the elites to play for their chiefs not to get involved with a political party because these chiefs get involved not because they want to. They get involved because they are hungry. They get involved because they want to live well too. So our, our elites, wherever they are, I call upon the diasporas, they have, they have the, the possibility to monthly send food to their chiefs, to care for their chiefs. This will make them diminish their, their, their hunger to join a political party. So I call upon the elites, wherever they are, to, to help their chiefs. And so, with the involvement of the world, a chief too is supposed to work. Now, how will a chief work in Cameroon? How will you get a good job if you are not part of the regime? That is the problem. The regime will always have control over the chiefs. The regime will always have control over the funds. So with the political atmosphere in Cameroon, no auxiliary of a government can be neutral without being part of the regime yeah no uh they can't be neutral but the chiefs will tell you that they have to survive for um, uh, fire every time we <laughs> know chiefs who have uh, eight seven wives they have uh, 60 children <laughs> and now the elites and the people when you when you go to the village i'm not sure you, you take anything to your phone how do they survive the, the people in Boya, I don't know how many of them go to their chiefs in the respective villages to assist the chiefs to survive with their wives and children. How do this one <laughs> tell you that we need to do something? Yeah. The main issue here is that in the modern 21st century and above, chiefs and phones are supposed to be working. Okay. Not like before. Uh, my own phone is working, the one of Mbemi is working, the one of Barakwe is working in the village I'm citing. Uh, the one of Baba one is a businessman, you know. You know, as a phone man, if you don't have work to do, get into contracts, get into things that could put money around you without necessarily soiling your hands. It's possible. You could open a business, and what happens? A serious phone that has a people by his side.
can equally talk to the village association. The village association that if you put a good project before them, all right, you know that I'm not working. I don't want to be disabled people every day, saving this amount of money. All right, I want to open a supermarket. At this place, at this place, and I put two three people because I cannot sell them myself to run this business for me. I will need about three or four or five million. They could take two, three years project and do fundraising, and you have that money to run the business. Because there is no village development association run by elites that will hear the phone is not working. And the phone intends to carry out something or a business to be self-sustaining and they will not support. So I think that in a nutshell, when you are a phone and you have what it takes, even if you cannot get a job in the government, you can get your subjects. Because it's a matter of people believing in you. But if the subjects doubt you because you have doubtful character, it will be difficult for you to put the project before them and they adhere to it. All right. We have other villages, like uh, we have um, even other villages within the Bengal Central, whereby the villages contribute money, annually a particular budget, and send it into the account of the fund. Now, a serious fund, if this kind of money carries your account, you can put it into a, in, 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 into a project. We have the fund of Chenam, for example, in, 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 in Bengal Central, who has a project. He runs an orange orchard. He's a businessman. He runs other businesses in the service in Kumba. So you cannot tell me that kind of phone will sit and be waiting for you to come and buy him over. So at the end of it, phones are supposed to make sure that they have something doing. I said if you can work in the government, because not everybody can work in the government, even if you work in the government, how much do you earn compared to if you could go maybe private or you put up a business? But the important thing is the moment the people have trust in you as a phone, put up a project and then go around. My phone, uh, uh, even the other phone who had traveled before the present one, used to make sure when he has a project, he visits, he makes a calendar, and visits all the development association branches around the 10 regions, and then set another program to visit those in the diaspora, and all those move as possible by the elite. By the time he's coming back, his project has been validated, and before you know it, he's running this project in the palace, he's doing this, he's doing that. I think that funds are supposed to have this kind of idea. I don't think I'm supposed to be telling them what to do. If you decide to sleep, you become lazy, because you want to eat fat from the government, the government is like the devil. He will not give you anything for free. As he gives one thing on the right hand, he's taking the other from the left hand. If he gives you food and you cannot give him voters, you cannot rig elections for him, you become his, his enemy, and you forfeit all the advantages that accrue to the evil practices you are supposed to carry out. So if you want to get the structure of the, the, the attritional system put in place, a real system is to put in place new constitution that will bring back the original powers of the phone. What the second thing to do is for the other regime to go on leave. If the other regime does not retire, if they don't go on leave, you have to hear me very well. If you don't go on lift, you will continue creating more havoc because you are driving towards end time. The best thing we can do for you is that go you on leave, since as you cannot restructure the things, and let us get people who come back and bring dignity that is force require and tell them to stay off politics so that they begin to regain their dignity. I am so I, I am very surprised when I hear like the Nguyen society, the Ngirong and all the like, the way politics is vitating. These are traditional strategies that if you even touch the phone. Just by them getting into the Gumba house and doing one or two things, you, who has laid your hands on the phone, things begin to happen to you. You'll be the one coming to confess and bringing goats and all the like for it to be cleansed. But okay. today, it's different. Okay, uh, Princess uh, G, writing from Yaoundé, who is following, uh, she should be a princess. She says, at first, the princess and princesses were not grown by the phone. The elderly phone's children, aunties and uncles took care of the phone's children. I'm a good example. My elder sister brought me up as uh, from the age of nine years till I had my first uh, child. Okay, <clears throat> now some people uh, need funds when they are already into politics. For example, a fund travels or a traditional ruler uh, leaves the scene, and maybe the person who is tip to take over is into politics are you saying are we saying here that, that they should drop whatever political activity they were engaged in I, I i think that is also possible but there is always a possibility flexibility in 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 choosing a traditional ruler i want to take for example from my own uh, village in kononi mm -hmm. if 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 you are a doubtful figure because uh, succession is uh, family league uh, line it follows the family line mm -hmm. and and that even gives more more reason why the the, the palace the, the the palace should uh, be well constructed because if you know that it is follows your family line you have to put your palace in a very very good shape knowing that your own siblings and all will always come take over the, 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 the palace so but i think that there was always a possibility and it has happened so many times 
that somebody who is to be picked as the next phone is of doubtful character and they pick someone else. No, the traditional society is very, very flexible. Are you saying that because you are engaged in, part, in uh, party politics, you have a doubtful character? No, I'm not talking about party politics uh, uh, per se. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about a doubtful character. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the traditional society what a doubtful character is. Mm -hmm. To another tra a traditional society, a doubtful character could be somebody who belongs to a particular party. Mm -hmm. Because, from my own reading, a phone is supposed to belong to all the political parties. This one brings, you take, the other one brings, you take, the other one brings, you take, you give them advice on what to do. Your essential goal is for the development of the palace and the village. Yeah. You take from all the pal 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 parties. That is how a, an IG phone is supposed to be. And therefore, when you come and you show that you are from this particular party, you are already bringing division. Because already somebody from the other party is going to look at you in an Askan manner and look at you in a different way. And knowing that you are already an enemy. Seeing politics in Africa is enmity. Politics in Africa, once I'm already a different party, we already have enemies, which is not supposed to be like that. So I'm just saying that when somebody is of a doubtful character, there's always a means to be able to change that person muted and take another person whom the people think they can trust. Because all is about trust there. Eh? Because uh, like, 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 the, uh, the Nigerians will say, long live the king. When you say long live the king, there are attributes of that that makes you say long live the king. It should be a king that is, has sustainability. And sustainability should, first of all, has its first tenet as a traditional root. If you are someone who is rooted and empty in terms of tradition because you follow politics there in Yaoundé, I shall for you. You will remain there with your politics. A king should be, first of all, someone who valorizes the tradition and knows what tradition is. A someone who is able to, able to pour libation and knows what libation is. No someone who will come and, and, and put uh, and sing party politics on the day of libation or, or do uh, campaigns on the day of libation. So those are some of the things we have to look for, that a king is supposed to be somebody who has the value of tradition, a person who is imbibed in the issue of tradition, a person who is trusted, a person who has grown up knowing what tradition is, and especially these kind of people that you are talking about, Mr. Kum, those who come out who is already in politics, those people are usually of doubtful character, because those are people who go to schools in Europe, and then they come back, they don't even know the tradition, and then they want to force themselves in to become kings and chiefs. Mm. Those are the people of doubtful character. I mean, we have often wanted people who have grown in the tradition, who have seen their fathers who were king, who died, and have learned from them, and they know about the traditional attributes, the traditional uh, uh, processes, and they are able to perform the tradition. I think that that's what a truthful king should be, or a chief should be. Okay. Uh, some chiefs, uh, Aquin, some chiefs uh, see they use politics to turn things in the favor of their, of their people. Can we say that a chief may engage in politics, get to Yaoundé or any other part, and bring development to his or her village? No, his village. Yes, Mr. Kum, it's very possible. A, a chief or a fawn of a village can use his political um, mm -hmm. party mm -hmm. to develop his village. Mm -hmm. Because when you are part of a regime or part of a political party, mm -hmm. you may have advantages, like if you are with a regime, you might have the possibility of asking the regime to come and tie the road of your village. You might have the possibility to, have the, to ask the regime to bring light, to bring water to your village. So I think that it is possible for some chiefs to use their political power in some political parties to bring development in their, in their villages or in their, in their community. It is very possible. Yeah, but uh, can we see that happening in Cameroon? It's, 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 it's possible, but have you seen some chiefs who, because they are involved in politics, have brought meaningful development to their regions? Cameroon, the system of, the, 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 the political system of Cameroon will not, in some other countries it's possible, but in Cameroon it's not possible. Why? Because the regime will always want to keep you under control. They will give you minute things like, you're throwing some corn to the fowl, and he eats. That's all. Come, the, 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 the political system of Cameroon will not give you pleasure to the fullest. They will come maybe during, uh, uh, um, how do they call it? during campaign, they give you 10, 10,000, 5, 5,000. They promise you we will bring roads, we will bring um, um, development to your country, to your village, just because they want you to convince your elites or your community to vote for them. And they tell you, when you vote for us, we are going to develop this place. At the end of the day, you find yourself having nothing. 
having nothing. But the chiefs will remain with them because they need to eat. They need to. They, 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 it is the government that pays the chiefs. It is the regime that kill them on, on the don't employ the agent. Don't. So for me, I think that the possibility is very slim. It is very slim for the government or for a, a, a chief or a fund to bring a great development to his community or to his village through a political party. Okay. Now, uh, when you look at political, the chiefs who are involved in active politics, we have seen many of them, eh? who are involved in many uh, political activities. Have they in any way changed the fortune of their villages? We know uh, that uh, Fondo of Balikumba, we saw he was also involved in in, in um, lots of contracts. Mm -hmm. But actually, tell me some of the funds or some of the chiefs in the southwest mm -hmm. went into politics and mm -hmm. are bringing development to the village. Or we may talk of Chief Mukete in, in Kumba. You know, uh, for Chief Mukete in Kumba, he has been a businessman from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so he's been into politics. It's not really uh, explaining why Kumba is the way it is today. But has, has uh, he changed Kumba in uh, any way? He has not really changed Kumba as per se. You know, if you look at the phone of Bavman, who is a central committee member, mm -hmm. you look at uh, the phone of uh, Mankon, vice president of the CPDM, mm -hmm. and you look at the, uh, the, the former uh, uh, president of the Southwest Chiefs Conference, who was the former one, who was from Lebialem, you know, and then most of others, even the present one. So you look at it critically, most of them play that role, uh, thinking that they could bring about meaningful development, but it doesn't work. That's why I said that they are supposed to be a political. Now, a real form, look at the issue. We had a station sometimes in BNB, I would like to give examples, where we had some of our funds who were humiliated. By the time when we had the minister, the, minister, the former minister of culture, Amar Tutubuna, most of them went there and stayed for weeks in Yaoundé, Sleeping in the in, in, in um, uh, sleeping in the waiting room for for days and not being able to see the minister because the minister too was charged. So you could imagine that kind of humiliation that you can go somewhere while others are waiting you to go and sit. Our force are not supposed to go somewhere and sit and wait. All those protocol ship in Yaoundé will instead help will instead help humiliate them. That is why I said if a phone is serious, each village or area has a constituency where you have a parliamentarian or a mayor. You can pass through those people if you like. Send them to Yaoundé. They can go on their behalf. And when the Olympics will say, my royal majesty has sent me to you, pleading that you should do this thing. I mean, that is where you can see the meaningful development because in real terms, you have not seen some particular things carried out in terms of the projects on, in the various villages as a result of those funds being in partisan politics. On the other hand, they are being in partisan politics is for their stomach. All these funds and chiefs you see like that, they are fighting for their stomach. When they enter the ruling party and political things, they know they are hearing, they should hear me very well. If someone tells that these funds are working for the interests of the village, now lie. I say fat lie. When they go there, you know we were following this issue. Norwest Force Union, Service Force Union. What did the government do? To, they picked up the president of Norwest Force Union, a senator. Picked up the president of the Southwest Force Union, senator. So they had to use most of them to be controlling, I mean the former, all of them were former. They had to use them to be controlling and penetrating the funds in terms of politics. And what is happening? We know about a statement called Royal Beggars. Most of these funds have been written in Yaoundé several times. I remember sometime at the funeral of Chantal, uh, is it Ilen Bia? Somewhere in Vomeka. Most of the funds, especially those of the Northwest, were abandoned somewhere. A day in Vomeka. And Ren dealt with them very well. I know the story. They are listening to me. They are listening to me. And so, if you look at the ones in the uh, uh, foreign chiefs in the Southwest, there are many times that they have had they have been abandoned at the Prime Minister's office. Former, they know what I'm talking about. Where they go there in their group, they go with the effigies that they want to come and give the head of state, uh, special effigies, when the police are looking for where to, to collect money. They know what I'm talking about. You see that design something that you are going to place the head of state, you go and see that your group that we have been mandated, because in return, money will come to you. These funds only look for money for their pockets in politics. So they don't mean good for the people. The only people you are, they are supposed to, See, it is to go to the elites who are politicians, but unfortunately, you will see today, like for the case of Southwest, funds who are loyal to the regime get a new layout. Funds who are loyal to the regime, they can easily meet other people and say, Okay, there's a village where nobody is there. We hear the village is existing. How is it existing? Somebody has to be found there. 
check the board, person who has to be found of the Dwala Tiko uh, village. She must be in the ruling party. Why? Because with some sort of compensation that they can come out a new lay, they can come a new lay out and give you to make money from it. You buy cars and move in luxury. Why will you not support the regime? But is that a duty you're supposed to do as a fund? No. That's why most of them they move like that, like empty, empty calabashes, with nothing in terms of content as far as tradition is concerned. Okay. But there are a few of them who are still standing the test of time, as I said, like the phone of Baba, who is still saying that no, the phone of Barakwe, the phone of Gunoko, a handful, a few of them, the rest, they've all been bought over. So I see them all like wind. Dry leaves blowing in the air. Our friends and chiefs uh, deserve some respect. Um, we are discussing whether they should be in politics or not. Petrus. Chairman, those who are in politics don't deserve respect because they have desecrated the traditional authorities. I'm talking as a pan Africanist and a traditionalist. If you are a phone and you sell yourself into partisan politics in Yaoundé, you desecrate the tradition, I will not give you respect. Not a dime. I, talking to you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, my media prime and uh, prime eye in particular uh, holds uh, very strong to the values, African values, and uh, respects all our chiefs, respects all our funds. We are just looking for ways to get a better society, let the people talk whether their funds and their chiefs should get involved in politics. That's the reason why we are doing uh, this. It's, it's not because uh, we are judging anybody. We have uh, Prime uh, actually respects all the chiefs. We respect them. We respect uh, the funds, whether they're in politics or not. This one says all funds and chiefs should engage in cement business in their various communities. The maker is writing from uh, Boya. Very interesting. <laughs> Prince William, writing from Baron Bikang, says good idea, but as we all know, the chiefs and funds are the custodians of the land. Do you really think all of them can handle the business mind? Because I think what majority of them know so well is to sell plots, okay? <laughs> the maker and... Uh, good evening, Mr. Liu. Funds should be out of politics and take care of their uh, subjects, as was the case in the past. Ba is writing from Yaoundé. Mr. Liu, evening, the phone of Zhang Tabi is a farmer and others' phones should learn from him. He's a farmer. Okay. Uh, Valentine is writing from uh, Amanda. Good evening, Mr. Liu. This is Sandy writing from Tombell. We should not put blames on our chiefs because they are all corrupted by the government, which caused them to forget about their duties as chiefs. I don't know why the Bacossians don't respect their prince and princesses, okay? Good evening, Mr. Liu. Chiefs are traditional authorities, but in place by God, put in place by God. But today they have desecrated their throne by aligning with the regime. Imagine a chief being kidnapped and the others killed by gunshot by Apostle Charles, writing from Limbe. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Congratulations for the good work you guys are doing to educate us on the issues concerning our country. A long song is not um, a good one. Anthony Bison from Kumba. Tina from Tico says, Mr. Liu, it said man by nature is a political being. How can a chief form not enjoy his privilege to join politics? Good evening to you, Tina. Okay. Uh, Peter. Okay. Good evening to you all. I'm confused. I want to ask if the former House of Chiefs was created through elections. That is House of Chiefs of Southern Cameroon. Cornelius writing from um, Mamfi. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Our chiefs should totally stay out of politics. In my first cycle, I studied the crown of thorns by Linus Asung, and it clearly showed how chiefs and priests should stay out of politics. They should continue doing that to their own downfall. Desmond Coleman, writing from Jotin in Noni. Good evening, Mr. Liu and the panelists. The traditional rulers who are not involved in politics, are they not living? Are their children not going to school? Langaman or Langaman from Beth Birita, writing from Mile 6. <laughs> Man of the people, you need to be neutral. If you are a CPDM phone, 
what becomes of the SDF masses who come for a kiss in your palace? It is obvious you are going to rule against them since they are SDF militants. Don't be a puppet for government. I'm for Edwin, writing from Bafut. Good evening, Mr. Liu. Traditional leaders should steer clear from politics because if a chief belongs to the CPDM, then those who belong to the SDF are not his subjects. Massa Henry, writing from Kumba. Our chiefs are not to get into politics, but I don't blame them. The CPDM regime has taken them hostage. If they don't get into politics, then development will not will be slow in his chiefdom. Have you seen any of them in the opposition side? Frank is writing from Bermuda. Okay, um, we have to end here, unfortunately. Um, one last question for you all. What should the House of Chiefs, uh, what role should uh, the House of Chiefs play as we speak because elections are going to take place in December? I think the House of Chiefs should fight in bringing back the respect of tradition as actually it used to be from inception. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? In my own village, you do not address a phone you. You address a phone them. In my village, you don't say you. You say them. That means the people. It means when you insult a phone or when you lack respect, like I'm not saying my co partner is far, is it? when you lack a respect to a phone, it is not to that person. It is to a whole village. And therefore, we usually understand that when a phone makes a mistake, it is his own very oath that he took that will condemn him. And he always does. So that one, it doesn't, we don't make a mistake about that. And I will uh, see, uh, they, they, somebody remarked me, and uh, this uh, Prime Minister, Philemon Young, who just, uh, 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 the former Prime Minister, when he was appointed, I was in a delegation of the Northwest Fund that went to uh, pay him a, a visit. Immediately he was appointed. All the funds from the Northwest went to, to respond. I was in that delegation. And they carried gifts. And when they went to give the gifts to the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister said, no, I do not need the gifts. You need the gifts. It was very remarkable to me. The Prime Minister refused to take the gifts. He said he doesn't need them. They the funds that need the gifts, and then they should take the gifts back. I'm saying this until, and the Prime Minister if is listening to me, will recall that incident. And many people were like, this man, what is he coming to? And now they started calling him Mr. Strict. I mean, I think that he did the right thing. Because those gifts that the funds carried, they didn't have what to eat. They were carrying to come and give the Prime Minister who has everything. So I think the House of Chiefs should be able to, to revamp our tradition and make our tradition worth it. It should be like a referee to be able to call some chiefs in order. Those chiefs that get into politics and they lose their heads. I think that the, that the House of Chiefs should be able to pull this straight. Do you um, think that anything is going to change with the way chiefs carry themselves in the Southwest and Northwest region? And Cameroon, will they come uh, into a place of the House of Chiefs? I think that the way the, the traditional chiefs and the rulers their attitudes will will change because with the coming elections, the regional elections will give them more power, will give them more ability to ex to exercise to exercise their their power to their community. And I will also say that the House of Chiefs should also work to restore back the sacredness of the chiefdom in our villages and in our community because chiefs are no longer regarded chiefs have lost their respect so i plead on the house of chiefs to work hand in hand to find a possibility to be able to restore back that respect that sacredness of the chiefs and also this house of chiefs should also bring out associations to be able to care for chiefs because chiefs are real hungry. That is why they get involved in so many political act activities and political parties. So I think that the House of Chiefs will play a great role to the change of the attitudes of the chiefs. Okay. Uh, what do you, do you think something is going to change when the, mm. when the House of Chiefs finally takes stage? Well, the first thing that I'm surprised is that we are putting on wishes. They say, uh, well, if wishes were horses, then beggars were right. I've seen most of us here on the platform saying we wish, we wish. We... Nothing will change good for the House of Chiefs coming up now. I am not talking whatever map. A kangaroo system gives birth to a kangaroo offspring. If you are not seeing anything good from the system as we find ourselves, the House of Chiefs, what is the parameter? What are their modus operandi? It's the same that people will tell me that digitalization
coming up with the regional elections will change. Nothing will change because it's a, it's a system whereby you still have people appointed by the Yaoundé to monitor your activities. And all what you do in the House of Chiefs is to make proposals. If you make proposals, the government can decide to take them as well as not to take them. Do you have use? I am very surprised that we are analyzing and saying things will change. Nothing will change. The chiefs are only what we call in the House of Chiefs are only going to be window dressing to sit there and consume state budget. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing this regional election in the House of Chiefs will do to change the status quo. After all, like uh, my sister Akwen quite said here, that uh, because chiefs are hungry and all the like, there is no way the government will empower those chiefs because government is the one to be vulnerable. So when they are vulnerable, they can always call them to perform assignments for the government. So the government does not stay getting to the villages and carrying out his modus operandi, which are evil. At the end of it, if you empower the chiefs, tomorrow they will start telling you, when you give an action, they say, no, wait first, let me think. So the government is not stupid. Yaoundé regime is very, very intelligent in terms of evil manif uh, manifestation. So they will do everything possible to keep the chiefs at the beggary position and then keep the house of chiefs as a window dressing. In fact, not as. The house of chief is a window dressing. Regional election councillors will be window dressing. That is what we should find. If the Senate, the National Assembly, that are well stronger institutions, cannot change a dime in impacting meaningful change in the government system, in the government state, in the, in the country, will it, will it be regional elections? Will it be regional councillors? Will it be regional chiefs? We are all wasting our time. I'm sorry we are wasting our time. There is no good thing. Chiefs hear me very well. I know people are happy to go there. Just go there and eat your money. If you think of an impact to change the status quo, it cannot go unless a backed up constitution is put in place. The entire system of the chief tenancy structure is restructured, and then before you can begin to see its implementation and even if it's for House of Chiefs, comes regional elections coming up of December. That one is window dressing another structure just to be wasting state budget. Let them enjoy. A time is coming. They will account for those things. Okay, we want to thank you all who took part uh, in the program and uh, to you. Butabe Jerry and uh, Lucy Ngongbo, uh, Tungwe Ngole Epie, Efia Fevo, Anita Eno uh, Takan, for all of you guys watching on Facebook, we want to say uh, good evening to you and thank you for taking part in the program. Uh, the comments are also many on uh, social media. We want to thank you, uh, Doctor, for coming. Thanks so much, Mr. Liu. It uh, was a good uh, program and we think that. Uh, all our little ideas will count, and that of course our chiefs will not sort of you. We want our chiefs to our fondoms to become real places of honor, places, palaces where we can go and hide. Thank you, Akwen, for coming. Thank you, Mr. Kom. I, I want to call upon the diaspora to listen to the voice of Tibo Nagi to call upon peace. They should look for solutions, they should look for ways to bring back peace in the non so We also want to thank you, uh, Five is time for coming. Well, thank you very much. While we are calling on the diaspora, my finger is pointing at the government who is the principal actor for peace to return. Any other thing, we are only singing a song here. Thank you. <laughs> Christian, thank you. Uh, Eli, thank you. Desmond, thank you. Petran, thank you. Dabi, Dambe, Bryant, uh, thank you. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs>